Welcome to the lightest kit installation tutorial in the in-frame configuration. We have already prepared the pre-installed crankset with freewheel, spider, and chainring. Let's take the spindle. In the case of Press Fit 92, we use a 128mm spindle. And in the case of Press Fit 92 as well, we have already inserted the spacers we need into the BB cups. For the sleeve on the chain side, we use two 2.5mm Teflon spacers. For the sleeve on the disc brake side, we use a single 2.5mm Teflon spacer. How do we distinguish the BB cups? The one on the chain side is wider than the one on the disc brake side. As for the spindle in the classic press fit 92, we have three 4mm spacers on the chain side, two spacers on the opposite side, also 4mm each and a small 1.5 mm Seeger. Of course, let's not forget the bearings. These spacers can also vary, even with the same press fit 92, to achieve optimal chain alignment, for example. The important thing when adjusting these spacers is that the bearing always rests on the light part of the spindle, always. Otherwise, play can develop. Another very important thing about the bearing is that it should rest in the sleeve for its entire length, so it should be at least flush or better yet, a bit inside. This is because if it's more towards the outside, it won't rest properly and play may develop. So, at least the edge of the sleeve should be. Let's now start installing the spindle. So, I have the three identical spacers on the chain side with the sleeve in the plate. Pay attention. The recess of the plate should face us now, during the installation. So, I insert it, insert the spindle, and start rotating the sleeve counterclockwise. Let's prepare our plate now, with the minus sign, in position for the motor. Then we'll adjust it better. Okay. We haven't tightened it all the way because later I'll have to adjust it better by rotating it. The support is now slightly. Now let's proceed to tighten the sleeve also on the opposite side, with Teflon as I mentioned before. During the installation, let's proceed with caution and always add a bit of grease to the threads. So let's add a bit of grease to the threads first. We've installed the BB cups on both sides and let's check that there's no axial play in the corner. In this case, there's no axial play. If there were, it would mean that the spacers are not enough. We open them and introduce additional Seegers or Teflon until the play is eliminated. We also need to check that the spindle rotates freely, smoothly. If the spindle is very rigid, it's evident that there are too many spacers. So, we remove some and find the right compromise. Let's now prepare to install the spacers to be placed between the crankset and the spindle. The crankset must enter the spindle for at least 8 mm. To measure how many spacers we need, I measure the current space. I have to measure it between the stop of the bearing inside and the profile of the crankset of the spindle. So, I position the caliper in this way and measure. We have 23 mm to fill. Minus the 8 mm needed for the crankset, it means I need at least 15 mm of spacers. So, I've prepared 4 mm spacers plus 2 Seeger rings. We're just shy of 14 mm. The less, the better, as the crankset will fit in more and the connection will be more stable. However, we need to be careful that the crankset doesn't touch the frame. Let's try with these spacers. I also insert the Seeger rings. I have to be careful because the Seeger ring has a cut at a certain point. 
I shouldn't place both cuts close, so I put them opposite each other. I rotate it 180 degrees and put it in place. Let's check if there's at least 8 millimeters. We're at 8 and 6. I put on the crank set. Before tightening the screw, I check that it makes at least three turns. One, two, and three. Okay. It has made three turns, so I can go ahead and tighten the screw with confidence. We check that the crank set and the chain ring don't touch the plate and that there's a bit of space. We have about a millimeter in this case. Then, we start taking measurements for the motor. So, let's take measurements for the motor. We need to figure out how many spacers to insert between the in-frame plates and the plates placed on the bottom bracket. Using the caliper, I measure the distance between the chain ring and the plate, so I position myself this way and measure. We're at 6.8 millimeters. Now, I measure the distance between the motor and the pinion. I insert the pinion and measure the distance between the tooth and this profile where the spacers go, which also continues here near the pinion. So, I position myself. Here we are, we're at 40 millimeters. Now, to calculate it, it was 68 and 40 millimeters. Let's subtract from these 40 millimeters all the known thicknesses. So, 40 minus 6.8 millimeters measured before, minus the width of the plate which is another 6 millimeters, the width of the other plate which is always 6 millimeters, we get 21. And the space will fill with our spacers. In this case, it'll be two 10 millimeters spacers plus a washer. So, I go to position them. Pay attention, here near the pinion, the spacer must be the machined one. Now we have to figure out how many spacers to put on the opposite side. We know that the total distance is 92 millimeters. 21 will be subtracted from the spacers and BB cups I placed, and the 6 millimeters of the plate. It results in 65. I also subtract the width of the motor, which is 26 and a half millimeters. That leaves 38 and a half millimeters, subtracting the other plate of 6 minus 6. We have 32 and a half millimeters left. So, here I'll have to put 32 and a half millimeters of spacers. So, let's always use the 10 millimeters ones. Then, the motor is assembled with the plates, and I insert it in between the plates I already placed before. I check laterally that the motor rests correctly, so the holes align with both plates. Here we don't have any obstacles in the frame. And on this side, we're well positioned. Let's turn it around and check here as well if the holes align. Unfortunately, the plate rests on the rear axle, creating some friction. This could lead to scratches or damage, so we decide to move the plate a bit inwards. This way, it will rest on this fixed part of the frame in this particular case. This is a special case. In other installations, it might be possible to leave the plates adhering to each other. Now, we've placed the two screws on each side. So, that's a total of four in various slots on the plates. In our case, we've also added a 5mm spacer in the middle. This ensures that the plate doesn't interfere with the axle. Now, we need to make sure that the motor, when in operation, is supported by the rear part of the frame since it's being pulled towards the wheel. 
So, we lift it upwards and also place something soft between the motor and the frame for a smooth contact. In this case, I've prepared this rubber piece in which I've even made a cutout for the cable in this frame. I'll place it between the motor and the frame. I push the motor up, close to the wheel. When it's in the right position, it's close. I then tighten the screws firmly. I keep it taut, perhaps get help from another person to hold the various components in place and tighten the screws. Now, I start tightening the screws while keeping the motor taut. After tightening all the screws, we proceed to attach the chain, the various links. I'd like to point out that we've used screws with countersunk heads, not cylindrical ones. This is because the countersinking of the screw allows it to mark the plate and make it more stable and secure. So, on the other side, I've installed the pedal sprocket, screwed the crankset tightly, and even added the motor's pinion. This is the standard arm for in-frame assembly. Unfortunately, in this type of installation, the arm doesn't work well since it requires a sharper bend. So, we've taken steps to accentuate the arm's bend by bending it using pliers and a vise. Now, we can proceed to install and tighten the nut. I remind you, be careful when tightening this nut, as it should go in straight, not at an angle, or it might break. Always add some medium strength thread locker. Now that I've securely fastened the arm screw, let's proceed to insert the chain. Okay. What I need to check is that the tensioner keeps the chain slightly bent. Then, by applying force on the crankset, the arm should oscillate. Like it does in this case, this is correct. If the chain were to remain consistently taut, the arm wouldn't work properly, and we would have to adjust the position of the pulley. Another thing to check is the alignment between the pulley, the pinion, and the sprocket. Indeed. All these elements must be perfectly aligned. For instance, in this case, all three are aligned. The chain should not touch the arm. There should be some clearance. The installation has been done correctly. Another thing to check is that with the longest gear, so the smaller pinion of the cassette, there's enough distance between the teeth of the chain ring and the chain. If they were to touch, the installation wouldn't be good, as the arm would risk being either too tense or too loose. In both cases, the motor could have anomalous behavior. 